Uh, welcome everyone and thank you very much for joining today's webinar. Uh, my name is Anna Karina Reibold and I work as a communications assistant at the European Cyclist Federation. Today I will moderate this webinar on how to kickstart a cargo bike sharing initiative in your city with the help of the Commons Cargo Bikes Toolbox. Um, but before we delve right into the webinar and before you will learn how you can um, introduce a Commons Cargo Bikes into your community, I would like to introduce the City Changer Cargo Bike Project which has been supporting the Commons Cargo Bikes movement and also helps with the promotion among partners, municipalities and civil society all over Europe. The City Changer Cargo Bike Project is an EU funded project that brings together a team of 22 partners um, from all over Europe, including cities, NGOs, uh, research institutions and industries. Together, we all work towards a common goal um, of fully exploiting the potential of cargo bikes and thereby enhancing air quality, road safety, urban quality of life, and so much more. On cyclelogistics.eu, you will find a wealth of resources on cargo bikes and cycle logistics for cities, individuals, and businesses. The City <coughs> Changer Cargo Bike Project is also on social media, so if you just type in at cyclelogistics, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. Uh, you will be able to find us there, and also you will be sure not to miss any updates in the future. Um, but before I hand over to the Commons Cargo Bikes team, I would like to encourage uh, anyone who has any questions to put them in the Q&A box, uh, which you will find on your control panel. Uh, we will collect them during the webinar, and we will also do our very best to answer them at the end. Also, if you're up for a little networking um, during the webinar, we encourage you to introduce yourself in the chat. So please tell us a bit more about yourselves, um, why you're here today, and also what you're hoping to learn. Um, we are very curious to get to know um, everyone. We also invite you to post about the webinar uh, on social media and, and also about the Commons Cargo Bike uh, movement. So if you do so, please use the hashtags Commons Cargo Bikes. So thank you again, everyone, uh, for being here with us today. I'm now very happy to introduce our speaker, um, Florian Egermann. Uh, Florian is an artist, an activist, and an astronaut based in Cologne, Germany. He is, the founding, uh, he is a founding member of um, Bilimbia e.V., a Cologne-based association that develops and runs award-winning urban projects. He also facilitated the incredibly successful Commons Cargo Bikes movement which counts more than 100 cargo bike sharing initiatives, offering free cargo bike sharing in many communities. Um, but he will now tell you um, about that um, himself. And Florian, I now give the floor to you. Hello, everyone. Am I on? Ah, there I am. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, it's exciting to be here in this um, webinar uh, so on. Yeah, I'm um, super happy that you take, your, take the time to um, listen to our story and our little how-to guide. Um, yes, I'm uh, yeah, super happy to be there. Thanks for your interest. Thanks for the invitation. And I will We'll talk today about, um, of course, Commons Cargo Bikes, like what kind of problem we identified um, with our project in Cologne, our solu solution to it, um, the Commons Cargo Bike principles, uh, about our wonderful network, and of course, how to start your own initiative. Um, please note that all of this, all of this knowledge is like that, that I'm presenting here is, is crowdsourced. We have this fantastic community of Commons Cargo Bike initiatives and all this knowledge uh, comes from many different sources and we are happy, we're super happy to share it. So let's, um, let's dive in. Um, I'm gonna share my screen. So. Here we go. Um, you should see my screen. If not, give me a ping. Um, yes, so I'm going to start with um, Commons Cargo Bikes. Um, uh, in 2013, in Cologne, we were a group of friends um, that uh, grew into this nonprofit association, the Leben e.V. 
Um, but we started as a group of friends uh, interested in improving life in the city and especially transportation. And uh, the problem you see here, we all know, um, unfortunately, very well, I guess, uh, too many cars used for transportation and not um, the solution, uh, cargo bikes. So cargo bikes are, I don't have to tell you, <laughs> probably not have to tell you too much about why cargo bikes rock but um, cargo bikes are a much more sustainable uh, way to transport goods in the city. But in 2013, in Cologne, uh, nobody was using them. You did not see them in the streets. Um, they were not, um, not available at the shops, at the dealers and so forth. And we set out um, to get people to use cargo bikes instead of cars. Um, we first asked ourselves, why don't people use cargo bikes? Um, and we identified the following um, problems, um, that they do not see cargo bikes in their city. Um, nobody in their in-group, like their friends, uses one. Uh, people never had the chance to try one, probably, or they just had the chance to try one at a dealer for like 20 minutes, but they could not put it really through the pace in like use it one day or two days and really see how it works with the family, for example. And of course, cargo bikes can be quite expensive relative to a normal uh, bike. Um, so we set out um, to solve that um, and make sustainable mobility visible and accessible. Um, and that led to the founding of Casimir, your cargo bike. Um, it's the free, that means donation-based uh, cargo bike sharing. Um, we use local multipliers as hosts for the bikes um, so that personal contacts establishes the service as part of the community, not that we are like another, um, uh, another uh, big company coming in trying to do some sharing. So, but we, it grows out of the community, ideally. And uh, for us as an organization or as a group of friends, um, we needed to keep the administration effort for the whole sharing project low and make it cost effective to run. Because of course you, you can buy a bike, but then you have to, um, it needs, the, the, pro, the project itself should be sustainable also. Um, so we needed to find uh, a principle that worked with low effort and uh, cost effectiveness. Um, these are a few impressions from our uh, years in Cologne. Uh, people, of course, are using cargo bikes for all sorts of different stuff. Um, after a few, um, our, Right after the beginning, we thought a bit about more about the principles of this Commons Cargo Bike Sharing, what we want to achieve and what the project is about. Um, and we kind of wrote it down like this. A Commons Cargo Bike is uh, available to all free of charge. So we want, we want to get uh, people to really use cargo bikes and uh, have it available uh, even if they're not able to pay or do not want to pay. Um, commons is important to us, a common good like sharing, uh, sharing with the community, um, not, park your, not park your bike at home, but uh, let it um, roam through the city, so to say. Um, a commons cargo bike is advocating for a change of mind in urban transportation. We want, we see this both as a service and as a sort of political project, because we really want we really want change on the streets, and we need more cargo bikes in the streets, so that the streets themselves will change. And super important, we rely on neighborhood cooperation. We rely rely on on people hosting the bike. We rely on the whole kind of um, structures within the city. I'm going to go into a few of these now, um, a few of these points. Uh, first, uh, the cargo bike hosts, uh, the locations. 
Um, on the right, you see this is from very early, from 2014 maybe. This is a map of Cologne. And on uh, the, the red dots are our locations, our hosts, and the orange dots are the people that um, use the bikes. So a lot of people actually went a long way to get our bike. Um, yeah, so what about the hosts? Um, the bikes are located at the local cafe, the community center and the university. So that's kind of the idea that we, we um, the bikes are where the people, where the people go and you see um, in your favorite cafe, you sit there and then there's a bike and you think, oh, that's a cargo bike, never saw that. And then you um, kind of realize that it's available for free. So um, people may be inclined um, to test it. Um, the hosts handle the pick up the return, pick up, pick up and return, sorry. Um, that's very important that um, the people that host, host the bikes are able to give out and return the bike because we cannot, we as a small association uh, cannot handle all the pick up and return and we use hosts um, to do that. And what's, what's in it for the hosts? Well, it's a good marketing opportunity, of course. They can say, hey, we are hosting Casimir, and um, they get new, new people uh, into their shops or into their cafes. Next um, important uh, ingredient of our sharing system is the booking software. So um, when we started out, we looked at diff a lot of different booking software, but uh, we couldn't find one that suited our needs. So we built our own. Um, so this is a software, an open source software, designed exactly for the needs of the Common Cargo Bikes initiatives. Um, and it features a simple online booking of one to three days and um, people uh, can book online and then they pick up the bike uh, with their id and the code at the location and this is um, an automated process so we designed the software to be so you can register uh, find your bike book it and go to the location and pick it up and we don't have to um, kind of micromanage um, and uh, kind of allow people um, uh, give people specialized approval. Um, connected with this very important uh, and very important ingredient is um, trust. So this is a big white um, slide, empty slide, because in the beginning we were not sure if we needed to, um, how much stuff we should get from the people, should we require a deposit or something, but in the end we decided um, we um, we trust the people. We want to we want a really low threshold booking system. Uh, let people um, we trust the people with their bikes. We trust them that they will not destroy them, and it worked out pretty great. Um, yeah, otherwise we wouldn't be sitting here probably <laughs> if trust didn't work. Yes, so that's kind of a few of the ingredients. Um, now. Um, after a few, um, after a, few, a little bit of time, when we uh, started in Cologne, um, we um, this wonderful network formed of like-minded initiatives. Um, uh, first in our region, and then across uh, Germany, and in more um, and in other countries now. Too. So here's a, a quick. Um, quick uh, overview over the milestones. So we are right now 88 active independent initiatives and 12 are in development, the little one you see here. And you see if we add those together, then we are at a wonderful number 100. <laughs> um, we are in the following countries, Austria, Germany, Hungary, and Sweden. And we have around 400 bikes available, which makes our network like the biggest cargo bike sharing provider in Germany and maybe other countries too. Um, about, more about the community. Um, we are not a formal association. 
but we are an open community. And every initiative has their own custom branding and website and so forth. And we are learning a lot and supporting each other. That's uh, kind of very important because uh, each initiative has a different, um, different angle and is in a city of a different size and has a different team and everything. There are a lot of variables to consider. And one of them is the logo too. On the right side, you can see some of them. Um, and anybody is invited to join this community um, by adding their project to the wiki. There's just this few um, principles um, that we require. But other than that, um, yeah, you're open to add it. Here's another view of the um, location of the current, uh, the current initiatives. So you see, there's a lot of a lot of free space around. Um, yeah, maybe we'll get some more markers on this map soon. And there we are at this um, at the kind of the, the meat, hopefully, of this uh, talk. Um, how to start an initiative? So, what do you need to start your initiative? Um, it's actually not that much. Um, what you need is one cargo bike, one location, you need a booking website, and you need a project name, or if you know a designer, maybe even a logo, maybe even a nice logo. Of course, but these are, these are all, for each of these points, um, I think there are a lot of lot of questions maybe already uh, coming through <laughs> or bubbling up so for example what kind of cargo bike should i get should i get an e-cargo bike should i get a normal cargo bike should i get more of a sporty bullet or should i get more a big uh, one with a big trunk for kids what kind of what kind of bike uh, suits our city our project uh, locations, how, how do I find those locations? How do I find locations that, that host our bike? Um, the booking website, of course, how do we, how do I um, get the, get uh, to, from zero to a booking website that handles all my booking? Um, and the project name, of course, other questions, what, what kind of logos should I choose and what kind of design and so forth. Luckily, um, for all of these uh, things, we have um, answers. Um, we have um, our tools, uh, mostly the, the commons booking software that I said earlier. And we have a lot of knowledge ready for you in our online wiki. And we have a network um, with a yearly conference and we are, all the initiatives are supporting each other and i'm i'm going to go into into all of these quickly um, again this booking software commons booking this is more the technical part what do you need it's an open source wordpress plugin so that's the technical basis um, wordpress is a very um, popular uh, cms um, that you can uh, often web hosts um, offer you um, that you can install it with one click. Um, and uh, as a WordPress plugin, you can install, ideally, you go to your web host, say, install WordPress, and then you go into WordPress, go into plugins, search for commons booking, and install that with one click. And you would be ready to go. Um, Commons Booking is currently available in German and English, um, but it can be translated. There's an open translation interface, um, yeah, and I would be happy to, um, uh, if there are questions about that, I would be happy to answer. Um, and it already got extensions by the community, so it's also already like it's a software package, but it already received uh, extensions by the community. On the left side, what you see there, this, this uh, map 
with um, you can already filter like two uh, two cycles, three cycles, and so forth. Um, this is actually made uh, by our friends from Flotte Berlin, uh, another initiative that builds extensions for Commons Booking. So it's a lively, um, it's a lively community even on the software side. Okay. Now we go to the manual. So the manual is um, is a wiki. Uh, similar to Wikipedia um, and we have there the crowdsourced knowledge and best practice of seven years and again as I said in the beginning it's knowledge from many initiatives from different uh, cities from different backgrounds some uh, sharing um, a little bit differently and so forth so we have a lot of um, a lot of um, a lot of knowledge that's already there and it's almost completely almost um, available in English. Um, and it's also uh, online available. You can translate it into any language uh, if you should wish so. And this is a quick um, look at what kind of um, what kind of uh, content there is in the manual. So it goes from the organizational form, what kind of, what should you become to um, uh, start your project? Do you need an association or something like that? The hosts, maintenance, uh, the booking software, communication, insurance, all of that. Um, all of that, um, the dry stuff and the nice stuff. Another thing I want to um, quickly um, remark that um, you can brand branding your project is, uh, um, is connected to the naming, of course. As I said before, like each of our initiatives has their own name and branding. They are not necessarily called Commons Cargo Bikes, um, or actually none of them is. They are called Hanna or Rudolf or Lara or Casimir. So this is really like a local, we want to build local brands where people um, get together and decide on their logo. And as you can see, the, the kind of variation um, goes from kind of brutalist logos to clearly left-wing logos to others that look more service-oriented and clean. And um, to me, the, the, the design in the beginning is a very, uh, it's uh, one of the, the biggest fun uh, I had in this project. Um, what we also offer is an annual Commons Cargo Bike Conference. So this happens every year in a different city and organized by the local initiative. So when we get together, um, we kind of decide together uh, which uh, or an initiative can say, hey, we want to host it and then they can host it. Uh, it's of course free to attend and it offered workshop uh, presentations and networking. And the next one is uh, 26 till 28th in Münster, Germany. If you um, would be interested in joining, that uh, would be fantastic. So far, we only had um, uh, the Commons Cargo Bike Conference in Germany so far, but maybe that will change in the coming years. So we already at the recap. Um, so uh, how to start a Commons Cargo Bike project in uh, seven steps. So the first one is find people to join your project. Maybe you already have a group of friends or maybe you can connect to a local um, transition town or a, a local um, bike club or something like that. Those are good addresses to ask. Um, you need to acquire some funding or you get, uh, or you have a, already a cargo bike that you want to um, share. 
um, for the for the funding, you already you can already find some nice material uh, online in the wiki. Um, you need to decide on and buy a cargo bike. So that's the model question: which cargo bike will fit our city, our initiative? Also, uh, a lot of information to that in the wiki. You need to find a name for your project, which is. Um, as I said, one of the uh, one of the great uh, a great fun uh, project, a great fun task. Um, you need to find your first host location, um, which also um, we have also some tips for this in the wiki, which um, which locations um, are uh, good good for the starting. Um, you need to buy a web hosting plan. And install WordPress and Commons booking so that your uh, bike can be booked online. And number seven, uh, of course, this is my favorite celebrate and start learning, sharing, and adapting. And I want to um, stress this again because that's like one of the one of the core things of about Commons cargo bikes. Um, this, this movement is evolving with each new initiative and contribution. There's not only we want to make uh, the bikes available to the people and, and change, uh, change the city, we also want to make all the information, all the knowledge, all the best, best practice, our flyers and um, all, all, all the things, our booking software. Uh, learnings and experiences. Um, we want to make them. Uh, we want to make them public so others can just grab whatever they, whatever they like and run with it. And that's why I'm super excited. Um, if there's new learnings and experiences, we are mostly, right now, mostly based in in Germany and Austria. But we're super excited what what you are bringing to the table. How it is in your country. How you're how the environment is, if there's a, some kind of political hurdles, maybe what kind of interesting roadblocks uh, you face and what kind of chances and ideas you, you come up with uh, in the process. So we're, yeah, we're um, super excited for this and we think um, like um, openness and, and sharing and this kind of open source spirit of uh, sharing tools and sharing knowledge um, will bring us, um, we can bring each city, each of our city forward. So um, here's an invitation slide. Um, that's from our uh, last um, Forum Freie Lastenräder, our last um, Commons Cargo Bike Conference. Um, yes, and uh, so the invitation here again, please join us. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that's already the end from me. Um, I wanted to quickly note that we um, would like to offer a consultation meeting. Um, and we thought of the first Monday each month. Uh, we have the dates online on this um, on this web address um, the second thing is all this this manual that i talked about it you can find it under uh, commons cargobikes.org and of course if there are any questions and there will be a lot um, i think we can uh, answer a few of them but also if you have to leave or um, don't get um, all of the information please uh, please talk to us. We can only like give a short overview over the project and um, yeah, but we would love to uh, talk to you individually uh, for all this. So um, yeah, thank you very much for me. Ah uh, yes, thank you. So if you do have uh, any more questions, please put them in the Q&A box. Um, also, if you would like to um, say something, you can also raise your hand and then I can give you um, permission uh, to talk.
Um, so one question is, uh, do you have a preferred bikes uh, that you recommend or can any group decide or can any group decide uh, what bikes to use? Hannes, do you want to take this or Stephanie? I'm sorry, I just tried to answer a question. So I, I didn't I hear the question you asked. Uh, sorry, uh, I'll read it again. Uh, do you have preferred bikes that you recommend or can any group decide what bikes to use? Um, so I, I will answer, so I just uh, present myself uh, shortly. So I'm Stefanie Andersek, one of the five speakers of this Commons Cargo Conference, which Florian mentioned. And basically you, you can start with that, any bike you have. Um, I think if you have a bike, just take it. Um, and there's different opinions which one is the best. So some say the two-wheeled ones are the best ones. Uh, and some say the three-wheeled ones are, are better because they are more stable, at least when you start. Um, so maybe you can also try to test some and then find a decision for yourself. Um, another question is, do you find that there is additional support needed for the first time riders, especially those with children? Is there training for how to ride or use a bike, lock up, uh, et cetera? Do you want to answer? Yes, um, I think it's always a good idea to watch people doing a small round around the corner and then help them to improve their, their knowledge about the bike and um, afterwards uh, they can do it much better. But it's not recommended or it's not uh, that you have to do that. Um, another question is, are there any terms and condi conditions uh, which a user has to sign before they can use the cargo bike? If you do have terms and conditions, what sort of things does it cover? For example, liability, uh, what to do if you get a, a, a puncture, I think, um, bike needs or bike needs some repair. So again, me, Hannes uh, from Cologne. Also, um, it's um, it's necessary that we have terms and conditions. Uh, it doesn't work without them. Uh, we we had a look on these commercial uh, bike sharing systems, how they do it, and we just uh, copied it and we made it a, a little smaller. That we have really no problems with that. Um, you can have uh, a look on the. German uh, ones uh, in, in German language on our wiki. We haven't uh, uh, translated, but um, if you try to, to, to use a Google translator or something else, you can find out what we write there. And then we have another question. Do you have many businesses using your schemes? And if so, are there additional issues to consider? Um, this is Stephanie. I'm not sure how this is meant, actually. Um, like, what what role the businesses have? Um, so maybe this question could be uh, specified. Um, I can, if you want, also give you the permission to talk. Um, um, Michael, would you like to uh, clarify your question? Hello. Yes, can you hear me? Um, I was wondering if it is uh, mainly families, individuals, or whether businesses can also use the bikes. And um, I wondered what the uh, people thought about businesses, maybe kind of, um, you know, if they're making a profit, and also are there other issues like um, insurance, for example, that have to be covered? Okay, so maybe I can say something on this. Um, but at least for my initiative, which is in Dresden, sometimes we have businesses or let's say initiatives, um, more like social, um, um, well, let's say communities or social um, businesses which um, rent our bikes for a week. Um, and then most times we 
they need to uh, have a permission to rent it for more than three days. And also we are then ask a fee because we need to finance those bikes somehow. That would be my answer. I don't know if there's any other experiences. Okay, thank you. Uh, then we have one more question. Do you use the GPS tracking for rented bikes or does some initiative use it? Hannes, do you know something about this? I'm not sure. No, I don't that. know any initiative using GPS tracking due to uh, security and safety and uh, data protection reasons. Nice. And also it's quite expensive. So I think we thought about this, but the solutions so far were quite expensive. Um, so at least we didn't think about really buying one of those tracking systems. Um, then I see that um, Isabel uh, has raised her hand. Um, I will give you permission to talk now. Uh, you should get a message now saying um, that I asked you to unmute. Um, okay, um, if you would like to talk later, uh, maybe just send us a message um, in the chat. Um, then we have a question. Do you think that at some point in time you might need to charge a, a higher fee? Even a modest amount must be must be helped towards maintenance and repair. Um, so this is Stephanie. I would answer this question. I think I tried to answer this before. So actually, it is a free of charge cargo bike. And if people do not have the money to pay or they do not want, it's uh, possible. But we always say, and also say this to our hosts who um, give out the bikes, that we are dependent on donations. So basically, it's free of charge, but we wish that people pay for the, the for the use. So, um, and also, if they would not pay at all, we could not finance our repairs. That's one thing you need to know. Is that good? <laughs> Well, I see another question from Sarah Koenig, so maybe I just answer, mm -hmm. which says how many people do donate and how much do they, they give? So that's, I think this is totally different. We, it depends on the host, for example, if they ask people to give a donation uh, every time when they hand back the bike. Um, and uh, I think we, from, I don't know, let's say 10 to 50 euros per month or so. It really depends on the bike and also on the post where the bike is uh, stationed. Um, then one more question. Are the cargo bikes both manual and electric? Shall I answer again? <laughs> um, so again, Stephanie. So I think there are some initiatives that start with uh, non-electric bikes or bikes without motors because this is um, more easily to handle and it's not um, or it's not so vulnerable, let's say. Um, but if you have hills, for example, and you cannot get up uh, uphill without a motor, it makes sense to buy a cargo bike with a motor. Uh, one more question regarding trust in bikes. Do you think different cultures may treat it differently? The UK have had successful and failed bi bike sharing schemes because of how people have treated the bikes from, from being thrown in the canal in Manchester to working well in London. Any tips? Yes. Um, it's it's mu mu much better if you get the people to be part of a project, um, get that, them in touch, give it a, a, a cool name that they identify with the project, that it is, is uh, that all people are around the city know it. Um, 
normally I say that in smaller cities it works much better than in bigger ones. We have uh, the, our friends in Berlin have much more problems than we in Cologne or in smaller cities. Um, so, and, and another thing is um, paint your bike. Uh, give it a paint that uh, nobody can uh, rob it and that everybody can recognize okay this is the cargo bike of the of the of the, of the local um, commons cargo bike project uh, so let's uh, let's keep it uh, good together let's keep it in in our heart Um, then we have a question. Uh, we have some trouble finding enough active people to make the project sustainable in the long, long term. What do you do to keep the community alive and have enough active people to run the project? Yeah, in Cologne we have around uh, 20 bikes uh, today, but we only own one of them. And we only run one of these bikes and all the other bikes are uh, managed by our cooperation partners, like uh, people from the university, people from the city, uh, the, the Federation of Bicycle uh, People, uh, and, and so on. So um, start your project not alone, um, get more people into that from the beginning, and uh, don't uh, run too many bikes by yourself. Um, in Germany and Austria, there's a problem with cargo bike theft. If so, what sort of security is provided to the user to employ the uh, to to employ to keep the bike safe? Have any bikes been stolen? I would answer this question as far as I know. So, well, we have thick uh, locks. That is for sure necessary. Sometimes we use also use two or three locks for the cargo bikes. Um, and we uh, encourage users to lock the bike to uh, something stable and if possible to lock it somewhere inside, but that's not always possible. Um, and I think that actually it ha not so many bikes have been stolen. Um, Yes, and another project in, in Bonn, our friends from Bonn, they have a, a, a trailer, a big one, uh, and it was uh, stolen once and then they started a Facebook and Twitter campaign and after three hours the bike, uh, the trailer was back. So again, uh, give it a cool outfit, uh, design it, give it a uh, yeah, color, a lot of color. Do you have any restrictions on who can use uh, the bike? For example, do riders have to be over 18? Um, I would answer this question. I'm not sure how the other initiatives do this, but I think they are all the same. So we have an official minimum age of 18. Um, but for example, if there's someone who's 16 and he really wants to use the bike, we sometimes give uh, an exemption. So, like they write an email and ask for permission and then they can still run the bike. Um, what is the utilization percentage over a week? Um, how long will it be used? Um, Hannes, do you know an answer? Um, oh. It's one to oh. up to three days, and uh, so it's not not a week that you can can have it. Um, I think it's um, yeah, Stephanie. Yeah, maybe I, maybe I, I have an answer. So like I I'm not into the statistics of our usage, <laughs> but um, actually those bikes are quite often used so for ex for example when i want to rent a bike it's really hard to find a free bike at least here in dresden oh, okay. um because people are so happy to be using it um so normally it's not that it's not being used what has been the reaction of insurance companies when there have been occurrences of bike theft Oof. 
I can't answer this question. <clears throat> Um, maybe this is a question Berlin could answer, but I'm not sure if they have a, an occurrence of bike theft, because actually not all initiatives have an insurance. So, if, for example, in Dresden we don't have one, uh, but some have. Uh, maybe this is something you can you can get get an answer on if you write a, a separate email. Let me see if you find, yeah if it's really important. We can try to find a, an answer. Um, I think that's uh, all the questions, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think one just popped up, one second. The natural progression for the scheme might be uh, to allow existing owners of cargo bikes to make their cargo bike available. Has this been done by any of the groups? Hannes, I would answer this question. So as far as I know, there's some of those examples in Berlin. So there, there had been bikes or cargo bikes which not which had not been used by their owners, and they made it available to the community. Yes, um, we do it, but not uh, private owners, but other corporations. And there is uh, another platform. It's called Velo Logistics. They do uh, focus on private owners to share their bikes. Um, if there are any more questions, uh, please put them in the Q&A box. On donations, uh, what amount do you do you generally ask for? Five euros. If they ask me how much to give, then I'll answer five euros. Maybe, I don't know, there's one question from Kim Harding from the very beginning. Shall I answer that one? Which it says, how do you fund your scheme? Maybe oh, that's yes, sorry, missed that. Um, so what I answered to, to Kim is that, for example, we used crowdfunding. We had grants for, from certain projects and we had donations to buy the first bike. And um, then for the repairs, we mostly used donations. So there's, you can use a mix of, of uh, money sources to, to buy your bag. Uh, so one more question just uh, popped up. Uh, I know different bikes have different maintenance costs, but have you ever calculated the approximate maintenance cost for a year? We didn't do that. We got it for free, so we... <laughs> But what about you, Stephanie? No, I don't think we have a, a, a an average maintenance cost per year. Like there's years for certain bikes where we have more repairs, and there's years where we did not have that many repairs. So it depends. But for example, brake, how does that, what was it called? Like the brake um, pads. Those ones are things which need to be uh, changed regularly, for example. This is something you can like, the more the bike is used, the more they, uh, they wear off.
Any final questions from anyone? Maybe we can answer on one question, but I'm not sure if we have a definite answer. So Rita Ferreira, she already asked uh, um, if we would have this session again because she missed it. Uh, and I said, like, we haven't planned it so far, but maybe we can think about it. So I'm, I'm not sure if, um, yeah, if we can say anything on this. She says she wants to promote uh, those in schools in Lisbon, so it would be helpful for her. Um, we will also be recording um, the session, so I think we can also make it available to everyone afterwards. Okay, fine. That sounds good. So we will send an email to everyone um, with uh, with uh, the, the recording and then you can watch it again and share it. Um, um, so one more question actually, are there any initiatives you know of which um, had to stop due to the people not donating enough? Mm, not for the moment. Uh, there are initiatives they stopped, but we don't know exactly why. The initiative for, from Munich, they stopped uh, some weeks ago, um, but we don't know why. Um, okay, so if there are no more uh, questions, um, I would like to thank uh, all of you for um, joining us today. Um, here you can see again the slides uh, with all the consultation meetings and um, contacts. So um, if you now feel inspired, uh, please contact the Commons Cargobex team. Um, would you like to say anything else? Thank you very much from Cologne. Yes, thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.